Um, the other thing, I just have a quick uh, note to, to correct myself in the last video I um, posted. Apparently, the uh, labs that were born in December, um, that duo bred, I think they're a litter of blacks. But I think the father was, um, well, the mother is a chocolate. I'm pretty sure the father was a black lab. And they may just have a chocolate cast to their coat. So they may look chocolate in some light. Um, but I was looking at pictures of them now that they're a little bit bigger. Um, and they are black. But they may be a black and a chocolate mix. So their coat color may be a little different in color. Um, just to correct that. Um, there were a couple of really cute pictures. If I can pull them, I'll put them in here to show you guys what that litter looks like now. Hey guys, I hadn't planned on shooting another video until at least the first week in February, but I decided I was going to do um, a video um, that of something I haven't quite done in a while, which is essentially a list of things that I plan on doing once I um, have the dog. And these are essentially things to help my scheduling and keep me sane. Um, the first of these things is I will set alarms like a mad person. Um, I am essentially going to set an alarm for everything. Um, at least one of the dog's meal times I'm setting an alarm for. Because I guarantee you at least once I will get sidetracked by something, usually the internet, yay, and forget to feed the dog. So to avoid that, I am going to set alarms. Um, I will, I also am going to plan on being extremely careful when I introduce uh, my dog to um, my mom's dog. I mean, this isn't a really big deal, and I've said this on this channel before, that's going to be a bit of an all order, because when you have a pet that's completely kind of undisciplined versus a service dog that's very well trained, service dog can pick up said bad habits, which makes them hard to handle, which won't make them a good service dog, so you're running to the trainer saying, this happened, this happened, and I want to avoid that. So I'm actually going to wait until I um, introduce the dog, um, the dogs, and um, it'll be a couple of weeks after I have the dog home. Um, I'm going to try to um, get on a schedule while I'm down in St. Louis. Um, and then hopefully by the time I get home, I have somewhat of a schedule, um, at least the timing of how long everything's going to take me. Um, so, I mean, that's going to be, it'll take me a while. Um, um, the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going, to, or, well, third thing, I guess, is I will end up, like, just staggering things, um, the training runs that I'm going to do when I'm out of the house, um, or maybe not out of the house that much. I have a few things I'm going to do when I'm out of the house is training runs. Um, I will, um, and I just, I'm going to stagger those, um, just so the dog doesn't get overwhelmed. And um, just because the dog has to settle in, I have to get used to taking care of a dog again because um, it's going to be almost three years. Um, hopefully it's not that long, but almost three years since I've had a dog in this house. So um, I'm going to do that. 
and um, I'm just going to stagger things, but I'm pretty much going to follow what um, Duo suggests um, to the letter, just because that's going to be easier for me. Um, I am going to move a few things around in here. Obviously, I have to do that since I'm bringing in a dog crate. Um, things will be rearranged. Um, so it's going to be a while before the dog like goes to church with me, is over at my parents' house with me on the weekends. Um, I think initially I'll probably only take the dog over to the house one day and not two days because one, when I go over to my parents' house on the day I go to church, I'm coming straight from church and the dog is not going to be with me. Um, at least for a week or two when I'm going to church. So, and of course, this depends on when I actually go down there. Knock on wood, it's in the next couple of months. Um, so, that's one of the other things I'm doing. Um, trying to think of what else. I mean, I pretty much have a plan for what I'm going to do, what I'm not going to do. Um, I will most likely have to stagger when the dogs are being fed on the days I am there. Um, this is mostly going to be once a week on Saturday night um, when I'm over there because that's the time I eat dinner over there and that I'll have to feed the dog over at my parents' house. I'll have to stagger when the dog uh, the dogs are being fed or we'll have issues. Um, somebody's going to go into a crate at some point and we'll just separate the dogs. Sometimes it's just easier because even if the dog isn't aggressive and Trip is not, but he tends to get very protective of his space. So it's just going to be easier for me to feed the dog, my dog, somewhere else. Um, so that's one of the things I'm going to do. The other thing I'm going to do um, is keep the dog on the lead when I am over at my parents' house. Because I had, I had thought about just letting the dog run around when I was over at my parents' house. I'm like, no. I can't really do that because I can guarantee I can guarantee um, the dog will pick up bad habits in a couple of weeks if I do that and I'm not really watching anything. Um, so, and I don't know what Trip is going to do. I mean, nothing bad, but eventually um, it's just going to be... Um, unpredictable so I've decided the dog is staying on the leash when I am over at the house um I mean most of the stuff's pretty straightforward I had considered running the dog on the bus when I needed to take the dog to like the vet or something like that um or when I was doing um outings out of the house and taking the dog with me I decided I'm not going to do that because I have no idea how I would even get this dog on the bus um and the last time I tried to get a service dog on the bus um the driver had an absolute fit um and I don't want to go through that again so um I am I'm not going to do that. I'm mostly going to have my parents drive me when I have to take the dog somewhere. Um, I mean, I would have to really, I would have to call CityLink to like say, hey, I have a service dog. Give the drivers a heads up. Um, but I have absolutely no idea how I would even get this dog on a bus. Um, and so at this point, I'm kind of stuck um and I will continue this video when I can remember some of my other things I was planning on putting in here 
And I'm trying to like figure out how my schedule is going to go. Um, I mean, I, I don't know that until I actually get the dog and start like figuring out a schedule. Um, if I have a golden retriever, um, it's going to take me an extra 10 minutes in the evening to comb this dog's hair out because combing, um, combing golden retrievers feathers is a pain. We had a golden retriever when I was growing up and he did not like getting groomed. His feathers were always a mess. Um, so I... I'm prepared to add an extra 10 minutes before I go to bed to comb out this dog if I have a golden. Um, I'm expecting to have a lab, but just in case, they absolutely have a dog that's perfect for me and it happens to be a golden retriever, that's fine. Um, but, I mean... The time it's going to take me to comb the dog out in the evening, I have to check eyes, ears, feet, whatever, particularly when the weather's kind of funky. Um, I have to figure out when I'm walking the dog when the weather's going to be fluctuating. Um, in the cold, that's not going to be an issue because they said the dogs are fine when it's cold. Um, but when it's zinging up to 90 degrees, I'm probably not going to walk the dog after lunch. I'll probably walk the dog in the morning. Um, I mean, I've walked a dog at like eight or nine in the morning in my pajamas. I've done that before. Um, so I'll probably end up doing that. I'm kind of, kind of running scenarios in my head okay, what if I do this? What if I do this? Um, that will work. Um, so I'm trying to like run scenarios in my head and trying to figure out how long stuff is going to take me, the thing that's going to take me the longest on a daily basis. Other than the, than the training of which we have to do like 40 minutes. And, um, so we have, so I'm like, the thing that's going to take me the longest is the check they want us to do on this dog every stinking day to make sure nothing's wrong and um, combing them out because they want us to comb the dog out every day, which I have no problem with since service dogs, they go out every day. You don't want them looking um, their coat to look nasty or anything like that. So, um, I will, that's the thing that's probably going to take me the longest and I'm prepared for that. That's not saying my training time down in St. Louis is going to take two weeks at this point. Um, and I can't see them bumping it back to one week just because um, the vaccine rollout isn't going to be done until at least the fall. Um, and we won't be on an even keel till at least maybe the end of the summer. Um, so hopefully, hopefully I have news in the next uh, few months. And that's pretty much the end of this video. Um, I may add more to it before I post it next week if I think of anything else. Um, I just kind of broke things up because of the way I was thinking of them right now. I know there's probably more if I sat down and had time to think about it. Um, but I just have all these little bits and pieces that I have flying around in my head right now. And I can't really test anything until I have more information when I'm actually going down there. And because of COVID, I'm kind of stuck until they say, give me the green light um, with the invitation for training. So when that comes, uh, you guys will know about it and stuff on this channel will get a whole lot busier. So until then, this is Service Dog Diaries signing off. Thank you.